Hey everyone, Steve here from PC Budget Solutions and it is time to do kind of a, a review. Not an overview, but a review. So I have the MSI B450 Tomahawk board. It's a fine board. It's handled overclocking without too much difficulty. It's been easy to work with. It was a $100 board. I think it was a really great purchase. But now I have a $150 board, it's an X470 board. Now, with this board, I get SLI support. I think this board also, I already had Crossfire, but Crossfire official support. Two more USBs, uh, room for a Wi-Fi um, connection, you know, like a dedicated Wi-Fi um, card. It has 7.1 surround, it has more power phases. It should have better overclocking capabilities because it does have like a, an eight pin and a four pin for the CPU. The question is, is while it's probably not worth us spending extra $50 from pure performance, how do things react? Is the voltage cleaner? Is the voltage have less spike? Uh, does XFR take it to a higher level? Are the temps gonna be better because of the voltage regulation? I was getting 1.47 volts under auto under this. The temps weren't bad, but it was definitely a lot more voltage than I like. So let's take a look. We're gonna take a look at how this performs, and then I'm gonna take the board out. It'll take about probably, oh, it's gonna take me a while. You guys will see, notice it like that, but you guys will see kind of difference and see if, if it's really reasonable to spend an extra $50 if it gives you better peace of mind or even a little better performance. So I'm taking this on my phone, long story, not going to go over, but this is on the X470 board with the CM, or I guess it would be ML240L, yeah, and you can see I did hit all core boost around, well it peaked at 4.3 but hit around 4 gigahertz. So that is the multi-core. So we're up about, uh, what, about 30, 40 points right there. This is the score I'm interested in here. I'll show you. 173, that's stock. That's XFR on an X470 board with that Master Liquid 240L. And, I mean, temps were, I mean, pretty much indicative of the last run. But, yeah, so what have we learned? Well, if my camera's not broken, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So the fastest I got at stock with the B450 board was 1735 and 167, I believe is what it was. On the X470 board, we got up to 173 and 1765. I ran the test multiple times on both platforms and that was the highest on both. So at stock, the X470 board did boost it consistently a little bit higher. We're looking at around, right around just shy of four gigahertz, whereas the B450 board is a hair of a 3.9 all core. And single core boost up to about 4.35 versus 4.275. So it does make a little bit of a difference. $50 worth, probably not. Now that being said, I did get a free 120 gig SSD from HP with my board, so. $30, a $25 value right there. But I think what we're gonna conclude with today is X470 has its place. They're not super expensive. A good quality board is about $130 to $150. But you also have some really high-end B450 boards that with the exception may like SLI support have good VRMs and I'm not sure how they'll handle XFR if you get like a $120 B450 board. But X470, if you are comfortable with, your, with, with what you have and, and spending an extra $50 won't give any kind of tangible benefits for performance or aesthetics or whatever, maybe spend it on the board. It might last a little bit longer, a little bit cleaner power delivery, a little bit better stock performance, and some more features you may want. So that is the conclusion. If you want to buy any one of these boards, link is in the description below. Buy from Amazon helps me out. If you did like this video, hit that like button. If you disliked, hit the dislike button. Uh, leave a comment. Let's chat. See if you like this stuff. Uh, otherwise, as always, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you later on down the road.